Hi there, it's Dave here from davestravelpages.com and in this video I'm going to show you the bike touring gear I'm taking with me for my next bike tour here in Greece. If you follow the YouTube channel, you may already know that I've got a couple of bike touring gear list videos on here already. Now the reason I'm doing another one is that no two bike tours are the same. The gear you take on one bike tour might be different than on another one. Now actually, for this bike tour, I'm taking a lot of the gear I used on my Hercules bike tour of the Peloponnese here in Greece. But there's a couple of differences, so I thought, hey, why not, I'll just make a new video anyway. So here we go, let's take a closer look at the bike and I'll talk about why it's set up the way it is and then I'll lay the gear out and then explain what I'm taking with me and why. As you might notice from the setup, I'm touring with two rear panniers and a rack pack, a handlebar bag, but there is no front rack or panniers. Now the reason for this is, well actually the reason for this is quite simple. All the gear that I need to take fits on the bike as it is. Now theoretically, it might be better to balance the bike out a little bit more, but to do that, I would need to add a front rack and the two panniers and that would add an additional three kilos of weight onto the bike. Then I'll just distribute some of the things from the rear panniers into the front and the bike will be balanced a little bit more. I've decided against this and I know that the bike works with this setup because earlier on in the year I cycled around the Peloponnese using this exact system. The front wheel does feel a bit light in places but it's something I can live with. Eagle eye people may also spot that this bike doesn't have any fenders. That's because I prefer to tour without fenders. It's a personal choice. If you like touring with fenders, then go ahead and do so. No worries. Each of the bags at the back, the two panniers, weighs about five kilos. The rack pack weighs about four kilos. And the handlebar bag, probably one kilo by the time I've got some extra snacks and things in there. What's missing from the bike, of course, is the two water bottles that would go on there. But other than that, that is pretty much what I'll be taking with me. The bike itself is a Stanforth Skylander, and I've reviewed that previously on this channel, which you can check out by clicking on the I button, which is probably appearing on your screen any second now. So with the look at the bike out the way, I'm now gonna lay the gear out and then go through it so you can see what I'm taking with me. This is a look at the handlebar bag and what I keep inside. The handlebar bag itself, I think, is the Ortlieb Ultimate 5. Now, it's not the biggest handlebar bag in the world. and uh, It is waterproof, but I think I could do with a bigger one. I just never really got around to getting one yet. So what do I keep inside then? Well, the snacks for the road, flapjack, uh, my wallet. Inside here is a passport and a map. A pair of headphones is in here, which I'll be recording vlogs on the road, so if you like this playlist and the YouTube channel, of course, you should follow along for the vlogs I'll be making on this bike tour. And the bike tour itself is gonna last for about a month here in Greece. Uh, Swiss Army knife. Da -da -da. Lip balm. Uh, house keys, as well as the keys for my bike lock. And some sunblock. And that all fits nicely inside the handlebar bag. So these are the items that are stored in the rack pack. So I keep my bike lock on top. I keep my tent and my sleeping mat in there, as well as my bike tool kit and my wet weather gear. So this is the most easily accessible bag, so that's why the wet weather gear and the bike tool kit gets put in there. So just quickly for the sleeping mat, it's just a standard foam thing. And the tent is a Van Gogh Banshee 200, which is a really, really good quality tent. It has got some limitations, but value for money, I, I really don't think there's a better tent on the market, really. And it's reasonably lightweight as well. I'm going to open these up separately so I can, you can see what I'm taking with me for my bike toolkit and the wet weather gear. Just taking with me a really basic toolkit. It consists of the Alien 2 multi-tool, a bike pump with a pressure gauge, a couple of patch kits, some oil and a spare inner tube. I'm pretty confident in the bike. Uh, don't really expect anything to go wrong. And if something does, I'm really very close to main towns and cities, uh, which will have bike shops. So I think that's all I need to take with me. It's pretty much what I took around the Peloponnese as well. You know, when it comes to wet weather gear for bike touring, I really don't think that there is a perfect solution. I've got a system that I'm happy with. I wouldn't say it keeps me 100% dry all the time, but I don't think many bike touring systems do. Anyway, I'll explain what there is. 
these are seal skin socks. And I, I like these because they keep your feet uh, toasty and warm. Uh, so even if you get wet, which you will do, um, your feet stay warm, which is great. So the only problem is the next day, you need to get these dry for the next day really, otherwise life's a little bit miserable first thing in the morning. Uh, these are a, a pair of rain trousers which are adequate, nothing special. They're not breathable, but they are waterproof. That's a seal skins hat. It's the same theory as the socks. It keeps your head uh, warm. Uh, although it does sort of, it's quite weird because it does absorb moisture, but it keeps your head warm at the same time. If you've never bought one before, just try an item and see what you think to it. I think it's worth it. It's great for winter cycling in the UK as well, actually. And then I've got a Gore-Tex jacket, which is, yeah, it's very, very good. It's one of those things that's quite expensive, but once you've taken the plunge, you realize how good it is. And of course, it will just last you for years after that. So it's one of those things that invest in it once, get a good quality bit of kit, and it, it will last. So that's the wet weather gear. So here's a look inside one of the panniers. And inside this one, I keep everything packed in a packing cube just because it keeps everything together. And inside the packing cube, well, there's quite an assortment of things really. So this bag is a bag of leads. So all the electronic gear I'm taking has all got different leads, obviously. Thank you very much, electronic manufacturers. So I keep them all together in there. So that's what's in there. I've got a power bank here. And I'm actually taking two power banks on this tour. Uh, this is one that I'd probably just use in the tent at night. I've had this one for years and years. It's, uh, it probably needs replacing now, but uh, really good quality investment. Some people think whether you should do solar or dynamo for your power needs when touring. Really, I think you could just get yourself a couple of power banks and you're always gonna be able to recharge them sort of every four or five days, really. So that's, that's uh, my power supply. This is my laptop lead. And the laptop lead also has a universal adapter, which has two USB slots. So even if I've only got one plug socket somewhere in a campground, a coffee shop or something, I can, if I'm clever, I can recharge all my gear at the same time. Other items inside here include a fleece, my Chromebook, it's not really as good as a laptop, but it does do everything I need. And because I need to work on the road, it's non-negotiable, so I need to take this laptop. Uh, in a way, it's a shame I have to work on the road, but on the other hand, at least I'm not stuck in an office. So yeah, I know what I prefer to do. So take that along. The Chromebook itself is, I think it's just over a kilo in weight. The lead is probably, well, it's probably 500 grams almost. But yeah, that's, that's fine. Uh, then I've got a couple of cycling tops. These are not actual proper cycling tops. These are activity tops. Uh, one, two, and then I'll be wearing another one. These are a pair of Humvee cycling shorts. And I've reviewed the Humvee cycling shorts before. This is my old pair. So what I'm gonna do, instead of taking a pair of trousers or pants, if you're an American with me, I'm gonna take two of these pairs of these Endura Humvee shorts and I'll wear the less sweaty pair at night after I finish cycling. Uh, these are a pair of padded inner shorts, another pair of padded inner shorts, and I'll be wearing a pair of padded inner shorts, a couple of pairs of socks, and I'll be wearing another pair of socks, of course. So basically I've got three of everything when it comes to clothes. And that is what is in that pannier. And finally, a look inside the last pannier. So here we have my sleeping bag, which is a snug pack chrysalis one. So I've had that uh, probably two or three years now, and that's pretty good. I think it's gonna be ideal for the conditions. Probably get down as low as 10 degrees at night while I'm traveling. It's actually gonna be quite uh, a wide range of temperatures. So it could be 35 during the day and get down to 10 at night. So that'll be nice. Uh, there's a pillow, which is just a cheap travel pillow, but it's surprising how much comfort it gives. So I take that with me. This is something that I need to test out. So this is a drink safe, uh, I think they call it some sort of tap. What do they call it, a travel tap? Yeah, drink, drink safe travel tap. So I'm gonna test that out. Uh, it was about 36 pounds on Amazon, but I paid a little bit more because I had to have it shipped here to Greece. I'm kind of looking forward to using it because I wanna cut down on the amount of plastic I use on bike tours, or in general for that matter. Now I do know from experience that uh, filtering your own water can be a bit tedious at times, 
but I'm gonna test this out and give it a go. And I believe it should be able to do bacteria and virus. So we'll see how I get on with that. Uh, what else do we have? Inside this plastic bag is a pair of trainers or sneakers if you're an American. This is kind of a random food bag. And inside the random food bag is some tea bags. You can't go anywhere without your tea bags, can you? A spork, which is a combination fork, knife, and spoon. There's a few coffees, sugar, and then right at the bottom there are some nuts and raisins and things. And that's in the bottom half of a Tupperware. I'm not taking the lid with me. And why, why I'm taking the Tupperware is because uh, it's nice to eat a Greek salad out of a Tupperware if I'm making one myself. I've tried eating it out of a plastic bag and it's just not the same. Surprising really, isn't it? And finally, this isn't actually a first aid kit. This is where I keep my toiletries. Well, and some first aid things as well. Let me try and open this up with one hand. Really should have thought this through before I did the video, shouldn't I? There we go. So inside here, there are some pills and they are Nurofen and like a diacom in case I get the runs. There's some um, napkins. Well, napkins, toilet paper basically for wild camping. Should be wild camping probably just, I don't know, one or two nights on this trip, but it's pretty open. So I'm gonna see what happens. This is a travel towel. Uh, I reviewed this separately on the channel earlier on. Let me put this the right way around. Mountain Warehouse travel towel. I think it cost a grand total of three euros and I got it when I was traveling through Portugal. Thought I'd buy it, see what it was like, and it was awesome. So I will be using that on my travels. And inside here, there is a mix of plasters and bandages, which don't really weigh anything. So I've just left them in there. And inside here is toothbrush, toothpaste, and some of those little shower gels you get from hotel rooms. And I'll kind of replace stuff as I go along. Oh, there's a bar of soap in there as well, which I'll use to shave and to wash with. And that is the contents of the last pannier. So there we have it. That's the bike touring gear that I'll be taking with me on my next tour. And that tour actually starts in just a few days time and I'll be leaving my doorstep here in Athens and heading northwards. And the previous video on this channel should be about the bike touring route I'm taking and some of the places I'm seeing. The first week is pretty much locked down, but after that things get a little bit looser and the bike tour should last between three and four weeks in length. Uh, if you like this video, please thumbs up and leave a comment and also subscribe to the channel because during the bike tour, I'll be making a vlog a day. So if you've ever wondered what it's like cycling in Greece, this will be a great time to find out. So thank you very much for watching this video and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers for now.